Dr. Dina Nasser from uh, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, stroke and cerebrovascular no uh, neurologist, who's going to be talking about uh, basically cryptogenic stroke. So please welcome Dina. Okay. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about cryptogenic stroke and more specifically embolic stroke of um, unspecified source or undetermined source. This is a very broad topic and is essentially my entire fellowship, but I'll do my best to focus on salient points and ongoing research over this next 30-minute period. So um, our objectives today is to cover definition or terminology between embolic stroke of undetermined source and cryptogenic stroke. And we'll review some patterns um, on imaging of infarcts that are suggestive of embolic strokes and discuss their potential culprits um, and the current research and evidence uh, behind investigations, pharmacologic and interventional therapies. So, cryptogenic stroke is a very broad term. It encompasses absolutely any stroke um, that does not have a source. So, this could be cortical, deep, large vessel, small vessel, doesn't matter. And cryptogenic strokes make up about 25 to 30 percent of strokes. Whereas embolic strokes of undetermined source, um, these are focused more on um, large vessels. So, specifically, they have to be non lacunar ischemic strokes. And again, no sources found. So, um, and the no sources found part is really um, determined by standard testing. So you have to have ruled out significant carotid stenosis, for example, over 50% or a cardioembolic source. So what's typical testing? Typical testing is head CT or an MRI, some sort of head imaging. And you do this to try to figure out, you know, aside from history and exam, is this anterior circulation or is this posterior circulation? If it's anterior circulation, you're going to want to look at the carotids. And you can do this with several different modalities. You can do a carotid ultrasound. You could do an MRA. You could do a CTA. And right now, dogma or, or standard of care is to try to determine the degree of stenosis um, to tell you what kind of um, therapy you're going to provide. So if it's severe um, ICA stenosis, you're going to recommend surgery. If it's moderate, um, you may recommend surgery versus pharmacologic management, depending on the patient's risk to benefit ratio with some of these procedures. If it's completely occluded, it's medical management, often with antiplatelets. Um, every now and then, some people will anticoagulate, particularly if it's more complicated with ongoing um, stump thromboembolism. And if it's less than 50% stenosis, or if it's in the posterior circulation, you are to kind of move on to other potential causes. So could it be 